It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. All right, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk to you about an article that was recently published by Mike Cohn. Now, all of you who know me know I'm a fanboy. I've always loved everything that Mike's put out and published. And this topic was interesting. It talks about the seven reasons or the logic behind why people don't attend demos or reviews. And many of these problems are things that are pretty easy to fix. They're they're kind of Captain Obvious, but sometimes I guess we just don't think of the most obvious things. So I thought I'd go through this list of seven with you and talk about what Mike sees and kind of give my my input or my feedback on it as well, because I think together we can probably give you a pretty good synopsis about the whole, hey, let's get the right people to the review. Yes. Coming at number one, bad time or day. Now, the first one's kind of obvious. If you're having your review or your demo every Friday at 10 a.m. and you notice that no one is showing up to your demo on Friday at 10 a.m., have you considered having a demo on a Tuesday or Thursday? I know it sounds crazy. That's crazy talk. That's blasphemy. But the truth is, Many times people have their schedule planned out, and many people just already have that time slot booked. And I find that by changing things up a little bit and trying to figure out the best day to have the demo where I'm going to get the most attendance, that's that's an easy solution. The other one is I actually had a team that did their demo, and they said, we think it'd be a good idea to have our demo exactly after lunch. So they planned it at like 1245. (laughs) I'm just like... That's probably the worst time ever that I've heard to do a demo, and they complain when no one showed. And I think that when your stakeholders aren't showing to review, it's it's most commonly just, hey, wrong time, wrong day. We need to figure it out. So, So that comes in at number one on the list. Number two, probably my favorite among the whole batch, the demo or review is boring. I have been to so many of those demos. And I love the way he he quotes it out here. He says, we've all been to too many sprint reviews that make the Cats movie look exciting. (laughs) I have been there. Oh, my goodness. When you go to the review and the product owner is introducing each product and each person is going up and showing and you're getting countless amounts of feedback that's wholly irrelevant. You know, you need to get to the point where You're not in that situation. You need to get to a point where you are excited about what you're about to present and you're presenting exciting things. I mean, everyone does not have to see that you can drag and drop an item from one column to another. I mean, unless that's a critical feature, there's no reason to show those types of things. I feel like we've been trapped into believing that we have to show everything when the truth is 75 to 80% of the people don't care about the feature, you probably shouldn't be showing it. Just trust me on this one. You need to control and throttle back what you're demoing and how you're demoing and who's demoing and make those meetings less boring. Number three, stakeholders don't see the reason why they should attend. Every time I go, I don't see stuff that's interesting to me or the last time I went, It was just this long, drawn-out meeting, and I only cared about one thing. I can go to their desk and figure that out. If you're having a meeting and you find that the stakeholders are disinterested, that's probably a good reason or a good sign. That's your sign (laughs) why they're not coming to your demo. If they're not coming to your review and they don't care, it's probably high time that you go and speak to someone and figure out what is causing them to not see value in what you are revealing or showing. And I think that sometimes we show people throughout the sprint, which is great. So then when it comes time for the review, people feel like I don't need to show. So I'm not saying don't show during the sprint. What I am saying is make sure when you do show at the end that you're making it interesting for the stakeholders and that they understand that the reason for them to attend is to support the team and to support the product and to provide feedback and to be there if other stakeholders have feedback about why the product was built a specific way. Coming at number four, it just takes too long. Oh my goodness. I have been to that one where it's just, it goes on 
and on and on. And you're like, will it ever end? And they bring in the box lunches with the little bag of potato chips, the apple and the half sandwich with the little puny six ounce bottle of water because they say we're going to go well through lunch. And you're just sitting here going, my will to live has completely been sucked away. P.T. Barnum had a quote from Barnum and Bailey Circus. He says, always leave them wanting more. You shouldn't try to do everything in your demo. Even if you're only showing 70 to 80% of the functionality that a feature can do, even if you're being skimpy about what can happen, you need to make sure you approach your demo with the attitude that we're trying to time box it and keep it to where it's a sustainable meeting and a meeting that people will want to attend. Coming at number five, feedback is not solicited, welcome, or acted on when given. (laughs) Oh my goodness. This is huge. If you are in a situation where you give your demo, and at the end, instead of saying any questions, you say, thank you, and you just fold your binder and walk out. I don't know about you, but regardless of political affiliation, I've seen too many of those meetings where a president of a country will go out and speak. And then at the end, they just walk off. They say no questions and they walk off and it leaves everybody so frustrated. I think that there needs to be conversation about what you built without making the meeting too long, which means you start by making sure you're demoing the right things. And and I kind of have a hint for this that I'll give to you at the very end. But you should elicit feedback, and then you should act upon that feedback and let people know that you appreciate their feedback so that they'll want to keep coming back to your review. Number six, there's just not enough visible progress. If you're not moving the bar and you have a review, well, people are just going to say, well, this is stupid. This is the same thing I saw last time, or there's not a whole lot different. There's, There's not a big update. Here's another clue. A lot of times... There are updates that take place, but the updates are things that happen behind the scene. The good example that Mike uses here, he says, if you ever had a friend who's lost weight slowly and you've been around them every day, you might not even notice that they lost a pound. But if you had that friend that you haven't seen in a long time and they've lost 20 pounds and you see them, you'll definitely know that they lost weight. You have to have enough visible progress to make the meeting make sense. Yes, it's a scrum rule that you have to have a demo every sprint. But the truth is, sometimes I change up the audience. Sometimes I do an internal, and then next sprint I'll do an external, just so that I'm not showing the same thing every time, and so people can be impressed by the market progress that we've made. Coming at number seven, stakeholders are just too dang busy to attend. When you're inviting people out of a full schedule, you have to be flexible and you have to try to understand that not everyone's going to be able to attend every time, but if what you're providing is worthwhile, they'll carve out time to be there. And I feel like if we understand this, then we can solve the problem. Because the truth is, not having people there is a serious problem, or not having the right people there, or taking too long, all those things are problems. But I do have a secret. I have a secret sauce. I have a formula. Now, I want to be clear. This piece that I'm about to speak about did not come from Mike Cohn. This is me adding an addendum onto Mike's presentation. So, Mike, I hope that's okay. My addendum is as follows. In the Scrum canon, if you will, (laughs) they say that the demo slash review is a single meeting, that everything that you've produced is demonstrated, that the team produces and uh, conducts the demo, A product owner facilitates the demo. There are questions at the end from all the different stakeholders, and the meeting should be time boxed to several hours. This hurts my heart just thinking about it that way, right? For me, I believe that we need to separate the review and the demo. It's two different things. The review meeting should be internal between a product owner and a team, And the purpose is for the product owner to A, make sure everything meets the acceptance criteria, and B, decide which items are prepared and ready for demo and which ones are approved for demo. Because if we can shrink down a number of things or or package things together to get a big bang, and we can plan that ahead of time, the team should set aside between a half hour and 40 minutes, somewhere in that range, 
to have an open discussion with the product owner about anything maybe that they didn't get to see that was completed late in the sprint or to review the things that were completed and determine which of those will be featured in the demo. And I think that's the key. Then if you have the demo subsequently after, yes, it's a little more time for the team to be involved, but the good news is it pays huge dividends because then you're only showing things at the demo that really make a difference. The demo because exciting, it becomes exciting because it was rehearsed and it's not stale or stagnant and everybody loves it. So my idea is to make review one meeting between a product owner and a team where you're validating everything that's ready for the demo and then following up with the demo second. My second tip is to make sure that when you do this, that you vary your audience. And I know many people may think, find this controversial as well, but I'll do one sprint, I'll do an internal demo where I'm just showing internal stakeholders everything that we built. Then the next sprint, I'll pick an external audience and show them what's going on so that they can see an update. But by not having the external audience present every single time, what winds up happening is they get excited about what we do produce and they are energetic and love what they see. So I think it's important for us to have a little bit of separation. Okay, well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, if you have an idea for an episode or something you'd like for me to review, reach out to us at learnmoreatagiledad.com. I'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. 